Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys. Whatever time y'all are tuning in, I certainly appreciate y'all are here. Today's video, guys, we're going to be opening up two different packages. One comes all the way from Eloy, Arizona. The other one comes from Statesboro, Georgia. And we're also going to be working on this Western Folding Hunter with a broken handle right here. We're going to be cleaning it up and changing this handle material out. We're going to leave that one alone. That one's bone. It's beautiful. This one's bone also, but it's broken right here. So we're going to be changing that out. But anyway, guys, I just want to thank y'all for tuning in today, and I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, guys, this is the one from Statesboro. We're going to open it up first. We're going to be opening up the one from Arizona next. Dear Mr. Kevin, I'm enclosing a Sawbuster Jr. that we discussed last week to trade for the Anvil Train Knife you showed on your channel. I really hate giving this knife up, but it would be worth it to me. I am very proud and honored to have a knife that comes from you because I think so highly of you and absolutely love your channel. I watch it every day. Plus, I love this that train knife. I have never come across one of those. You really inspire me to look hard for knives, and you have also taught me so much about knives. I have been casu casually collecting knives my entire life, but since watching your channel, I have upped my game considerably. Thanks for all you do. <laughs> well, buddy, I appreciate that so much, Wayne. I will be getting that knife into the mail probably this afternoon or tomorrow. Well, let's look at this side buster here. Check that out. That is a 2022. Love the etching on that blade. Very cool. You know, that's when they were still stamping. See how that's a stamp? But now you order a new knife, it's etched in there, not stamped. So Case is lowering their standard again. The 2024s, I believe, are being et or etched in there instead of stamped. So I'm just saying, guys, the quality of Case knives keeps going down and down and down. That's all I'm going to say. Folks got on to me last time about talking bad about Case. But guys, they are living on their name right now. That's all they're doing. But Wayne, thank you for this, buddy. It's a great knife. I will be getting that knife into the mail probably this afternoon or tomorrow. Appreciate it, man. Wayne sent that side buster all the way from Statesboro, Georgia. 167 miles away from Ellaville, Georgia. Wayne, appreciate the trade, buddy. Appreciate you support the channel. God bless you, man. Hey, guys. This one comes all the way from Arizona. From Eloy. Arizona from uh, Mr. Mark. Hey, Kevin. I love what you do and haven't missed any of your videos. I have been down since Christmas with a bad back and two prostate surgeries. Your videos helped me get through the day. The compass was my father's. The green came from a piece of leather. The case changer needs scales. I thought the black ebony scale material one of your viewers sent in would look beautiful. The other two knives I get I got at a flea market. I thought you could clean them up and put them in the auction or keep them for yourself. Please give your buddy Wade the Navy Zippo. Wow, he's going to love that. And the Marine Zippo is for you. The knives in the red bags, I would like to get back. They're all trappers, and I have been collecting them to give to my cousin. He has done a lot for me, and I want to surprise him. The Boker needs a 9mm replacement badge and a knife doctor cleanup and sharpen. The blue Sologen. Needs to clean up and sharpen. Please try to buff writing off a of blade. Please try to buff right. Okay. I'm, I'm hiding this phone number, guys. The Parker needs the scales glued in a few spots. Clean and sharpen. The case needs a clean and sharpen. I've included $20 to ship back to me. Please call me, and he left his phone number. If I need to send you anything else or have any questions, thank you for what you do, Mark. P.S. I had my wife rewrite this so you could read it. 
I understand, buddy. Well, I'll definitely take a look at these, man. Uh, I might not be able to get to them till uh, next week, or may I may be able to squeeze it in this, this week. It all depends, but buddy. But we'll definitely we'll take a look at that. Uh, sure will. This is the compass that belonged to his dad. This is very cool. I think it's a compass. Look at that. Ain't that awesome, guys? Where's that made at? Zoom in. Kufel and Esther Company, New York. That's who made it. Check that thing out, y'all. Wow. This thing's old, y'all. That is so awesome. Awesome, man. Got that. That is very cool. Can't wait to show my buddy Wade and Eric tomorrow. And, and, and Lamar. We're, we're, we're going over there tomorrow. Let's see right here. That's a Camp King. These are great, great little knives. Cheap too. You can pick these up for real cheap. You can throw these in your backpack, and 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 they're they're probably the cheapest camp knife that one can buy. But you know what? They do the job. They really do. And the worst thing about about these is the black stuff just starts to peel off of here. The coating on on the the metal clamshell handles. But they're they got good steel. I mean, I wouldn't do no heavy cutting, but as far as food prep and uh, opening bottles, use it for a screwdriver, can opener. This is a perfect little camp knife that you wouldn't be, if you lose it, you wouldn't be lost in anything because you don't pay m much for them. So they're, they're very well made though. This one right here looks about like a colonial. It is a colonial. How about that? Thing is nice, man. Very well made. Got great snap. That's gonna be fun to clean up right there. That's a nice little, little knife. It's old too. See the size of them bolsters? That's a telltale sign and that's Pretty old knife, and it's a nice little knife. I love that. Let's see what this one is. It's a case exchange, like he was saying. How about that? Well, I guess I got to piece one together again. This is awesome, buddy. The '91. Ain't that cool? Yeah, I can put some scales on here. Yes, sir. Yeah, I guess the, the scales are glued on. Let's see. No, actually. It's not the same. Yeah, we just got to glue a piece on. It looks like that's the way it was made. See, this is one with stag. So it's got a pin all the way through it. It's like it's thicker, thicker brass too, see? So that's probably the way it was made. It was probably plastic or something. Very nice. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. I already got a sheath for it. So all I need now is the blades like that. Right here. Ain't that cool? So now I gotta put scales on there. Possibly, when I get set up, bone. I might just go ahead and put bone on there. Cause it'd be a straight cut, see? 
Might even put wood. I don't know yet. The ebony, like he was saying, would look good too. But but at least we got a sheath and we got to look for, for other blades now. Now these are the trappers he was referring to. Wow, that's pretty. Parker Cutlery. Made in Japan. Yeah, we can clean this up. Wow, yeah, that was the, gotta put a shell in that one. Very nice knife, whoa, what's that one? Solids and steel, just needs to be cleaned up and put an edge on it, you see it? Old Ram, Kentucky, 76, Syracuse, 67, huh, it's got a little bit of age to it. That's a case, yeah, that's going to be fun to clean up. Now, this one here is a... Uh, Two thousand and one. That's awesome. This will clean up good. Sure will. Now that patina is probably going to stay in that blade. We'll definitely give it a clean up, buddy. I'll get these done here. Just put it. I'll, I'll get these done by the end of, of next week. I might start on a few of them this week and do the, the other two for next week. How about that? But that one, this one's going to clean up good. That's got some nice carbon steel in that one. Sharpen it up. Let's see, that's a Boca Tree brand. Again, guys, if y'all don't know much about the Boca Tree brand, that tree is the... the uh, symbol of their company that's a chestnut tree that chestnut tree according to the the writings i've read was uh beside their tool shop back in the late 1600s they used to make tools so they're they're one of the oldest probably the oldest company there is around for tree for knives and tools so very cool knife here and this one's a case of 2001 very cool, and this is a, just a solidin. It says solidin steel. It's got uh, old ram right there. This one here is a uh, I love that match stripe. Par Parker Edwards or Parker Cutlery Company. I'm sorry, made in Japan. And now the Zippos. One of them will be going in my my display case. Oh, this is the navy one for Wade. <laughs> He's gonna love that. And this is the Marine Corps one. Yes, sir. That's gonna go in my display case just like that. Brand spanking new, unused. I have one like this, but I but I it's been used and I, I carry it from time to time. But but this one's brand spanking new with the uh, the box. Mark, thank you so much for this, buddy. I absolutely love it. I really do. Thank you so much. Mm hmm. So again, Mark, this is going to be going into my um uh, my big old Zippo display case that I uh, I just bought. Love it, man. Thank you so much. And Wade is going to love that right there. Never been used. That is so awesome. We well, thank you, Mark. I'll get on these this, this week, buddy. Might even do this one tomorrow or the next day. Well, tomorrow I'm going to... Uh, 
the meat weighed in them, so I can't do it tomorrow. So be one day this week. I'll do do these and shouldn't take much. I'll I'll try to get all all these done toward the end of next of, of this week or the beginning of of. I'll I'll try to get all these done at the end of this week or uh, beginning of next week, buddy. Thank you, man. Appreciate all this stuff, man. Mark sent those knives and gifts all the way from Eloy, Arizona. 1,865 miles away from Ellaville, Georgia. Mark, appreciate those Zippos, buddy. I appreciate the knives. And I appreciate you support the channel. God bless you, buddy. Anyway, guys, here is the uh, Western knife. I'm going to be changing this handle material out on. And you see it's a Western, Boulder, Colorado. Made in USA. Hoorah. But we're going to clean this knife up. And then we're going to change the handle out. We might even change it out before we clean it up. But I think we're going to go ahead and just clean it up and then change this out. But it's going to clean up good, guys. I'm not going to take the whole side off. But you see what I got here. Somebody sent this stuff in to me. And I don't know who it, who it is. I apologize. But uh, I'm actually going to. I'm not changing the whole um, not gonna change out the whole thing. I'm just gonna take this plastic material off here. Take this bone off like see right here, this fits per perfectly just like that. See there? But I wanna keep my lanyard hole right here. I'm just gonna pop this plastic off. I'm gonna grind that down and uh, take that bone off. I might have to grind that head down a little bit. And see, that might be a little thinner. I might be able to round that off again to make that go down on there. But I'm gonna take this piece off right here. Pop this off, which we may be able to do right now. There's no sense in even trying to save it. Just like that. We gotta clean that up now. See that one don't, see that one was pinned on right here. We're gonna take that off. We'll grind them two pins down. It should fall right off of there. these pins out there we go got that one out got that one so now all we gotta do is grind that head down some well, that'll fit over down on that and then we might be able to tap that out again make it flat because it looks pretty thick yeah I think that'll work. So now we're gonna go over there. See, all we gotta do is put a little glue on the back of that to keep them pins in. That'll just be for looks. But it's gonna look good. It's gonna be a beautiful knife. It's gonna be plastic on one side and bone on the other, but I would go ahead and take that off and put the other on there, but that's just too pretty of a doggone bone to mess with. So I'm gonna leave it alone. Then we're gonna put a leather lanyard back here too, but this knife's gonna clean up good, guys. 
Gonna clean up real good. Okay guys, we're fixing to use the fiber wheel on my three inch bench grinder to do the bolsters and the back springs and the blades. guys I got it good and dry now I'm fixing to go ahead and give a both blades a good little edge with my sander this one here's got chips on the end see right there so we need to give it a new edge down through there see that right there we rock Hey guys, I have ran into an issue here. Believe it or not, this western side made for these knives will not fit perfectly on this knife. I mean, it, it'll fit down over the pin and looks good and all, but you see it's gonna be a gap right here. And when I get that straight, see it, it's even taller. It's even above this, so I'm gonna sand that down. So it's not gonna be an easy job like I thought it would. So also when I get this back in straight, this back in fits better than the front end, but you see it's crooked up here when I get this straight down here. So I'm gonna keep this straight, keep this crooked. What I'm gonna try to do when I sand it, I'm gonna collect that dust, that plastic, and fill that gap in right there. See how that does and kind of fill this gap in too. But uh, it's gonna look good. Then I'm gonna, once I get it glued on, I'm gonna tap that pin down some more to flatten it out a little bit because it's raised up some. It'll flatten out and spread out to help hold this in. Well, right now we're fixing to use this epoxy, this working time 30 minutes. As a hardener and resin you mix together and, and uh, it forms an epoxy we're gonna put it on there but we're gonna have to rough this up and rough this back side up to help it uh, stick real good it's making some pretty good deep scratches in here
First of all, I'm gonna use this alcohol pad. Try to clean some of that glue off the handle. Yeah, I got the back straight right there. Thing about it is though, uh, it's gonna take some sanding when it dries. Time on deck is uh, about 25 after eight this morning. And I'll come back at nine. All right, while the knife is drying, the glue, I'm gonna clean this compass up real quick. All it is got the green um, corrosion from the, it was stored with this leather. This never dull. I'll clean it right up. Okay hey guys, here's the compass. It cleaned up really good. This was made by a company out of uh, it's the Kufel and Esser Company. Kufel and Esser was formed in 1867 by German immigrants. They made drafting equipment. I guess to survey the lands and stuff, and this would be one of them. And I think they're still in business today, but they've been bought, bought out. But uh, they were in business for a long time. Even the building they started in is like a landmark in New York today. That's pretty cool. But uh, very nice. Very well made, too. And it still works. Point north. Ain't that cool? That's just too awesome. Ain't that cool? <laughs> Still works. That's when craftsmanship was a was an art, man. This thing is possibly a hundred years old. Or, or older. Because they were formed in 1867. And they started referring to them as Key and E. So this is a... This has the full name on there. Which is... Kuffel and Esser. It's pretty cool. Thank you, Mark, again, buddy, for sending this in. I will cherish this forever. I cannot wait to show Wade, Eric, and Lamar tomorrow. Okay, guys, here's the knife. So what we're going to do is sand this down some and sand that down some, and we're going to see if we can't make a little bit of glue and stick right in there. So we're going to do it really slow. We're going to sand it slow. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Hey guys, I have my little 
pieces of plastic, the sand it off part. I'm gonna mix that up with some glue and stick it in that gap right there. It ain't really bad. It ain't as bad as I thought it was gonna be, but it cleaned up really good. But now I'm fixing to go ahead and tap that pin down to widen that out to even help hold this even better. Just like that. Ain't that cool? It's flat now, see? What I'm about to do now, guys, I'm gonna just put a drop of this stuff in here. Just like that. I'll put a drop of this right here. Mix it up real good. light with this little piece of thin wood right here because you don't need much we're gonna just put it right down in there make sure we get that crack feel okay then I didn't have enough, but at least the gap would be filled. Okay, guys, I'm gonna hit it with Neville Doyle now. It's coming along, guys. It looks really good. The handle turned out better than I thought it would. It really did. I'm gonna clean this real quick. Okay, I've waxed this leather lanyard here. I'll just twist it right through the hole. Okay guys, here is the Western Folding Hunter. I guess they call it a folding hunter, but it was made in Boulder, Colorado between 1950 and 1961. I got my book right here. There it is right here. See, 1950 and 1961. I know it wasn't made between 28 and 31, but it was between 1950 and 1961. This knife was. It's got some age to it now. It's older than I am. But look at that back, how it cleaned up. And you see, I sanded them uh, handles down. Come out really good. Back here too, see? Ain't that awesome? And I'm going to continue to fill that gap in until it closes all the way up with glue. See, right back here too. But it uh, it's on there solid, and that pin worked out really good, guys flatten it out and that helps hold it in place beautiful ain't it i got them left them pins in there they're glued in there now they'll be in there for a long time it's got good snap though see very cool ain't it now i need me a sheath for it i'm gonna take this and show my buddy wade eric and lamar tomorrow ain't that a beautiful knife y'all this is how it used to look. And now look at this. <laughs> Very cool, isn't it? I was lucky enough, though, to have some Western blades and Western handle material. And I'm so sorry, but I forgot the subscriber's name uh, that sent this in. If you're out there, buddy, let me know it was you. 
I appreciate it so much. But uh, it sure worked out. It didn't fit perfectly, which y'all seen. I had to line it up straight back here and sand the rest to make it fit. And then it's kind of had a little gap right there, but it's filling in nicely. It's going to take another a filling, I believe, to get it really smooth back here as well. But ain't that cool, guys? And look how it cleaned up on the inside. Look here. Ain't that beautiful? I'm, I got a little bit of oil in there. I got to get out. I put some CLP in there. See, it's still coming out on the blade right there. Hoorah. Well, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed the video today. There it is, guys. Ain't it beautiful? Beautiful, ain't it? <laughs> it worked out very well. It's got bone on one side and that plastic on that side, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It really is. Love this thing. See that? Ain't that awesome, guys? Beautiful, ain't it? Western. In the 50s and 60s and 70s, that's when Western was Western, guys. Even the 80s, they made, well, Coleman bought out Western then, so uh, it started going downhill then. But uh, still, still they were made in USA, and they were good knives then, but I'm telling you, this is when Western was Western. They made some absolutely gorgeous knives. They really did. Very well designed, very well made. Love it, love it. Can't get enough of it, guys. Can't get enough of it. I'm addicted. So addicted. <laughs> of cleaning up knives and just bringing them back to their glory. You know? That looks so much better now. It really does. It was kind of a little... uh wouldn't say a pain. It was fun. I enjoyed it. But you had to uh, really worry and think about if it's going to work or not. I could have very easily taken the handles off and used those handles, but I lost that lanyard right there. But I'd had to take the whole knife apart, and I didn't want to do that, and I didn't want to lose the lanyard hole. So that's why I just took the piece of plastic off that one that was sent in, and it worked like a charm. And I bought this, I think, in a flea market over in, uh, I don't even know where I bought it. It was either in Dothan or it was in uh, Lee County flea market. But it's a fine specimen now, ain't it? Love it. Sure do. Mm, mm, mm. Also want to thank Wayne and uh, Mark again. Wayne, thank you for the trade, buddy. I'm gonna, I am gonna—I got to find that knife and I got to send it to you sometime this week. I'm going to try to get it out tomorrow. And uh, Mark, thank you for uh, the Zippos. Uh, thank you for those knives, buddy. And I'll get on your knives uh, probably toward the end of the week or first of next week. And I'll get them shipped out. I know by the end of next week, so... Uh, I'll get all that taken care of. But I appreciate those Zippos. I know Wade is going to love that one. So, Anyway, guys, again, thank y'all so much for tuning in. I want to say God bless y'all. Till we meet again, guys, that'd be like a good knife. Stay short. I'm the knife doctor on the road. David O'Bly, so many stories told. USA made, fixing those springs, handles repair, they shine and they bang. Flea markets, pawn shops, antique stores, searching for treasure, always room for more.